Herr Vorsitzender, liebe Kollegen. Ich werde zur kulturellen Diversität nicht noch weiter beitragen, indem ich jetzt beim Deutschen bleibe. Aber ich wollte Sie zumindest in dieser Sprache begrüßen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here and to address uh, a couple of issues that have been discussed. The awkward situation for somebody who has not participated in the meetings during the entire day to come here and to, to give the conclusions is a little bit uh, difficult. So I probably better restrain, refrain from that and concentrate on a few issues by, and by cutting the, uh, the prepared text a bit. Because obviously, ladies and gentlemen, we have a couple of major issues that need to be addressed by our political leaders in the regions, in the member states, on the European Union level. Because although I'm going to speak about progress that has been made in some areas, and which is quite remarkable and should not be underestimated, we have a couple of major or mega challenges ahead. Youth unemployment probably is the most difficult one and most challenging one, because if we simply let this develop the way it developed over the last couple of years, we have social explosives in your communities and regions in our member states, which at the end of the day might bring the patience of our citizens to an end, who for the big majority see the necessity to come to terms with budgetary deficits and structural reform needs. But thank God, nowadays the European Union consists of 27 democratically constituted members. This is wonderful, and it has not been this case 50 years ago. So huge progress has been made in Europe in this, and then we cannot complain that the citizens are getting a little bit nervous that the political crowd is not getting this crisis under control the way the citizens wish it to be. So this is one major challenge we need to address. And if it's a major challenge for the member states, the regions, the communities, and the EU itself, then of course it is also a challenge for the EU bank. So we need to address this issue um, more, uh, with more resolve and in more in detail. The other major challenge goes along with the fragmentation of the markets for SME financing or for financing in general. This is not really the idea of the internal market or the job which we have to contribute to the completion of the internal market. If somebody is unlucky enough to have a successful medium-sized company five miles south of the Austrian-Italian border, then he is at a serious disadvantage for quite some time vis-a-vis -vis the competitor a few miles north of the border. So we have, we have to address these issues because the fragmentation of the financial markets translates into disruptions of the basic idea of the, of the internal market. And this is the, the second big challenge. Now, I'm talking here about problems and not solutions. We are desperately looking for solutions, negotiating with the Commission, negotiating with the Member States, with European Central Bank and other actors. Europe has not succeeded yet in the global discussions over the last years to convey the message that we are giving a consolidated, coordinated, coherent response to the crisis. We seem to act as individual actors, agencies, Commission, Eurogroup, Member States, ECB, EIB, ESM. If we want to convince our partners in the globalizing world that Europe will still play, a significant, still play a significant role in the world of the 21st century, then I think we need to convince them that we have this coherent message and that different instruments are interacting. I have no doubt that fiscal consolidation is a prerequisite for economic recovery. One would have to be blind to simply repeat the mistakes of the past. What we have learned from the past, what we have learned from Lehman Brothers, should be 
in front of our eyes when we approach new instruments. But we need the new instruments. There is no question. And the European Investment Bank is having probably the most comfortable role in the concert of the institutions which cooperate and must come up with a coherent strategy, Commission, Council, ECB, ESM, EIB. Because we are required or expected to produce incentives and impetus for employment and growth and innovation. I always put innovation to this because that is going to decide where we stand, we're going to stand 10, 20, 30 years from now. If we are exclusively short-term oriented now because we so desperately need improvements and hope, signs of hopes on the horizon for our young people in particular and for SMEs, then we might lose the future by not addressing the challenges that will um, come up then. Well, the couple of last, the last couple of years have shown resolve and effects. And I think we should talk about this more also on the, on the international scene. We, on the, when I go to the conferences in Washington or in Tokyo of the IMF and the World Bank, the Europeans exclusively talk about crises and do not talk about political substance nor economic and fiscal substance. And uh, we can say that budgetary discipline in the European Union is considerably improving. Public deficits are forecast to fall under 3% in the Eurozone this year. Risk premium and peripheral sovereign debt have been on a downward trend for many, many months now. But at the same time, economic crisis lingers on. And there is substantial underinvestment in many areas that are key to our competitiveness, well-being, and sustainable development. <coughs> and in many places, as I said before, in context of youth unemployment, it has gotten a very, very serious social dimension. Mm -hmm. And behind every job loss, there is a human story, and every business closure has wider repercussions for the community. So the regional dimension of politics is the one closest to the citizen, as we all know. Local and regional authorities are important partners in our activities, and we support them. This is our contribution to strengthening the fabric of Europe, to promoting the development and competitiveness across the EU. And we always have to do it with our partners on the ground, in particular our, the banking partners. And the situation there in the region is extremely diverging in terms of activities of these banks and other financial institutions, and in terms of their rating problems, which must be addressed. What is important here is that our role as a public institution is to address market gaps. If and when and where the private sector banking systems or the, the public banking systems in the member states can, tear, can take care of these investment needs or financing needs themselves, we are not needed. But presently, we see that the banking sector is deleveraging in Europe. The EIB therefore plays an even more important role and we have to exert some or play some serious expectation management here because sometimes the expectation vis-a-vis -vis the bank are much too high. A few years ago, in my country, even on the very day I was elected president uh, of the bank, the bank is completely unknown, or was completely unknown. Now all of a sudden the expectations are mile high. The uh, EIB is not the panacea. It can bring about a contribution to the, mitigating, to the mitigation of, of the problems. Well, you remember that last year the European Council took a very courageous decision. This came after the analysis that the European Investment Bank, after its huge contribution to mitigating the Lehman Brothers aftermath, had to reduce the business volume to 50 billion last year. And of course, for most of us, this is not comprehensible or goes against basic macroeconomic guts. So the idea was to say, if we, want, if we are expected 
to do more for employment and job creation and innovation. And if we do not want to ruin our reputation in the markets, which is extremely high, as you know, which produces very low interest rates for our loans, then we need to shape up the balance sheet of the bank. And the balance sheet of the bank looks very nice. There were 232 billion capital on that bank. Unfortunately, the member states had forgotten to pay in 222 of these uh, 232 billion. The rest is accumulated profits of the last 55 years. So what the member state, states did last year was to double the paid in capital, the actually cash paid in capital. And you can imagine you all are responsible for fiscal resources, how popular it is to go to a finance minister these days and say, why Mr. Schäuble, why Monsieur uh, Moscovici or whoever it is, don't you go to your national parliament and go for a supplementary budget and give us 1.7 billion cash? They did it with the full support of the European Council, the European Parliament, and as I realized, the full support of th this council, this committee as well. So we are very grateful for this, and now we need to deliver. What does it mean? It means to be able to organize a, an investment volume, an additional investment volume of 60 billion within three years. Which, since we always cooperate with others and also this less leverage, will bring about an investment volume of somewhere between 180 billion and 200 billion within these three years, in addition to what we are doing anyway. So this year, our need, our, our possibilities to, to give out uh, loans increases to close to 70 billion. This is a huge amount of money. And uh, it needs to be well spent, because one thing must not happen. The quality of the projects must not suffer because you increase the volume by 40%. And the new people will not come in overnight. If we want to get the best people in the bank's system, banking system, in the community, of the industry, then it's going to take some time to get them to Luxembourg. So it is a huge effort that needs to be done now. At the same time, we are trying to expand the partner base of the bank in the member states. And this is where the regions come in and why it is so important to operate closely with you. And the differences are enormous, as I indicated, at least due to the different activities of the, of the promotional banks in the member states. And this is something we work on. Well, the commissioner, when he talked about his green paper, spoke about the need for long-time financing. And indeed, access to funding uh, in particular, long-term funding is crucial to the restore growth and jobs. A switch to a more resource-efficient and smarter economy, uh, which is absolutely vital for Europe if it wants to remain competitiveness on the global scale, will not come about without large volumes of long-term investment and without structural reforms that unleash the potential of that investment. So the long, long view must prevail, must not be forgotten, because even if our problems are now very short-term, and we need indeed signs of hope soon, also, the long term begins today, so we cannot postpone that. Uh, with a balance sheet of uh, more than half a trillion euro, I think we can give a contribution here. But uh, some people overlook the fact that answers to global challenges very often originate at the local level. And this is the basic principle of subsidiarity, and subsidiarity both in the European philosophy